think that's going to work out. There we go. Welcome to chapel, everybody. It's Friday, and we're so glad you've made it. We've made it. We've got a day to do together, but God is blessing us by bringing us to this moment in time and breath of life. We do want to give a shout out to our basketball team's last home game tomorrow night, 5.30, men's game after that. Really encourage you to come out and cheer them on. Uh, we give thanks to God for all the good blessings of gathering, of seeing neighbor, and having opportunities to love one another. Why don't we take a, a moment of quiet, and then Katie's going to lead us in a prayer. God, thank you for being with us this week. Thank you for walking through the good and the bad with us and reminding, reminding us that you never leave our side. Help us to learn to fully embrace you and worship you with our hearts and our souls today and in the days to come as we worship you. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Mark 6:45 through 51. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he went up on the mountain to pray. When the evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. When he saw that they were straining at the oars against an adverse wind, he came towards them early in the morning, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately they spoke to him, or spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. God is great. Amen. God is great. Amen. 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 It is so good to see you all today. Happy Friday. Vestaban is here. Feeling good. And uh, it is always just uh, an honor. Every time I, I, I come up here, I, I realize how much of a gift it is um, to be able to speak um, out of God's word and to um, offer something to our community. And so... Um, I'm really thankful for that. A, a couple weeks ago, um, I, I, I spoke a very short sermon during our communion service, but we talked about a really similar passage in Mark chapter 4, where Jesus is again teaching on the edge of the shore to a large crowd. Uh, they get into a boat, and they're commanded to go to the other side. And there's a great storm, and everyone panics and Jesus is asleep, and when they wake up Jesus, they ask him if, if he even cares if they drown. And so Jesus get, gets up, and he tells the storm to be quiet, to be still, and the winds calm. It ends with them being terrified and asking this question, who is this guy? Who is Jesus? You know, actually, in the, the book of Mark, this is actually the question which Mark is trying to tackle. The question which he is asking and also asking his readers to ponder about. The major question is, who is Jesus? And actually, Mark actually makes it very clear from the very beginning. Verse 1, he actually answers this question and then continues to prove his point. And he says this, The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ Son of God. He begins by saying that this gospel, this good news that is pro to be proclaimed to us is that Jesus is the Son of God. A and Mark tells his readers that, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Messiah, the one that we have been waiting for, the promised one. This is Jesus. A and Mark has a pretty unique way of telling us this the story of who Jesus is by collecting all of these different stories and really pointing these snippets of what it means to know who Jesus is. There's even a part in Mark chapter 8 
where Jesus actually asked the questions to his disciples. Who do people say that I am? And so they answer, uh, maybe you're John the Baptist, or, or you're Elijah, or maybe you're one of the prophets. And then he asks his followers, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answers, you are the Messiah. In, in the passage that we just read right now, it's the same thing. We read another story. It's just actually two chapters apart from, verse, from chapter 4 to chapter 6. And we read another story about the disciples finding themselves on a boat, going to the other side. Except this time, Jesus isn't with them. Jesus had also been with a large crowd. He actually was with a, gro- with a crowd of, of over 5,000 people. He had just performed the miracle of feeding all of them with five loaves and two fish. And so Jesus actually retreats and goes up to the mountain to pray, but he sends them on their way onto the boat going to the other side of the sea. Now now just imagine for a moment that you're a disciple on this boat. You've seen this miracle that Jesus has done. You've actually, uh, maybe in days prior, you had also seen Jesus uh, uh, heal a man who was demon-possessed. You you had seen Jesus calm a storm and speak to the winds and the waves, and they were calm because of his command. You're seeing all of this. You just left a place in which 5,000 people were fed, and now you're on this boat. I wonder what the conversation's about. I, I really believe that the disciples are actually having this conversation. Who is this guy? Who, who is this Jesus? Because there are a lot of things that are happening in our, that we're witnessing that we just can't understand. It's amazing. It's, it's out of this world. It's supernatural. And so I, I believe that as these disciples are going on this boat, they are really having this question. Who is this? Who is this Jesus? And so in the passage... They're going on this boat, going to the other side. A great wind comes, and they're struggling. It says that they were straining at the oars because the the winds were going against them. And it says that Jesus sees them from a distance, from the shore. He sees that they're struggling, and it's early in the morning, so it's probably still dark. And so what Jesus decides to do is quite interesting. He just decides to walk on the water. He actually, the passage, which is really funny to me, the passage says that he intended to just pass them by. And and, and Jesus is on on the water, he's he's, he's walking, and, and, and the disciples notice him, and they catch him, and they are terrified. I mean, just imagine for a moment that you're on a boat, you're straining with your oars, and all of a sudden someone's walking alongside of you on the water just hanging out, and actually, they weren't even intending to stop by. They were just going to walk right on through. It's weird, right? You know, actually, the, the, the passage says that they were terrified, that they were full of fear, that they were afraid. I don't know about you, or actually, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a person who is easily scared in the dark. Um, uh, when I was a student here, uh, my roommates would try to scare me all the time. Uh, in our dorm, you know, like hiding behind the door, you know, and then you open up and they were there or, you know, whatever. They, they would do just crazy things. Um, one of the things, and, and I don't know why I'm sharing this story in, chap- in chapel, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, my, my sophomore year, I'm on a uh, on summer ministry team. Yeah, <laughs> SMT. I'm on SMT and we're in Sacramento. Yeah, another, whoa. <laughs> With every phrase, I'm going to get, woo! Uh, and so, uh, and so we, we're at a friend's house, one of our SMT members, and uh, we're told um, that we have to move our van. Um, off the street, because we were parked, we had a van, and we had a trailer hitched with all of our equipment, and we were staying with uh, one of our SMT members at, at her home. Um, and so, they say, you have to move it, move it out, of the, out of the street, so why don't you move it into the driveway? And they had a really long driveway. And so they send me out. It was dark, and they're like, Esteban, just go, go ahead and do it. I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So I, 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 I bring the van and the trailer into the driveway. 
and it's really, really dark. I think they also just turned off all the lights. And um, one of my other band members, our electric guitarist, he had decided from the very beginning of SMT that he was going to pack his scream outfit. So the, you know the scream outfit? You know what I'm talking about? The you know, like that, you know, it's just that, right? He had packed this scream outfit. My other friends, who, uh, one of them was my roommate, brought his camera with him. And what they decided to do is just stay hi- they hid behind bushes, waiting for me to come up this, this driveway, a really dark driveway. So I'm walking back. All I have are the van keys in my hand. I'm walking back, and all of a sudden, Rawr! and he has this, like, big fake knife and this scream outfit. And I... Uh, if you've ever heard me scream, it's very high pitch. <laughs> and so it's like, ah! You know, and just like, it, it, it happens. But then, but then the screaming doesn't necessarily, like, it, it, it's not consistent. So it's like, ah, 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 ah! And it was, just, it, was, it, it was hard. And the only thing that I could do in that moment was to get my keys and chuck them at him. <laughs> and I just threw it. And, and so then the scream person, like, starts, like, laughing. He's like, oh, did he just throw his keys at me? Right? And, and, and then he takes off his mask, and the whole band is behind the bushes watching this, and it's also being filmed. Um, yeah, lovely. Let's get that tape. But uh, it was such a fearful moment for me. Terrified. I... I, I th- like, it, it was really, really hard for me to actually get a composure of myself after that. I mean, it took me a few minutes. And they're like, guys, it's, all, it, it's, it's okay, Esteban, you're fine, you're fine. But this is the level of fear that I'm trying to imagine these disciples going through. They think they're seeing a ghost. They're terrified. They have no idea why there's a person walking on the water. And yet in this frightening moment, there's a voice and they recognize that it is Jesus that says this, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. It is I, it is Jesus. Probably the guy that you've been talking about, the person that you've been trying to figure out, uh, you know, who, who, who I am, it's me. There's something interesting and something so profound about being reminded of whose presence we are in, in times of fear. There is something about understanding that even in our circumstances that are so hard, we can remind ourselves of whose presence we are in. That Jesus is the one who says, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. You know, know, uh, this passage and this, this story is actually told three times in the Gospels. It's told in uh, the book of John, Mark, and Matthew. Um, Mark and and John's accounts are are, are fairly similar. But in Matthew, there's something added to the story. In, In this narrative where Jesus is walking on the water, Matthew records that uh, after Jesus says, take courage, it is I, Peter then responds and says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out to you on the water. I find that fascinating. I used to read this passage and think, what is Peter doing? What a knucklehead, you know? Like, especially after you read a a couple other stories uh, about Peter, you start wondering, like, does this guy even get it? And and yet, as I've been reading this passage more and more and more, I've come to understand and be in awe of the courage that Peter had. In, in, In a very terrifying time, in a very fearful moment, once he heard and understood that he was in the presence of Jesus, he moved into a place of courage. He said, if it is you, let me come out to you in the water. If it is you walking in the water, I I, I, want to do that too. I I wonder if I can too. It, It is if he recognized that once he was in the presence of Jesus, that it could transform his very life, that it could change who he was. And so the passage says that he gets out of the boat, and he actually starts walking on the water, and yet he sees the wind and the waves, and he sees everything around him, and starts to sink. 
and yet Jesus is there to pick him up. The question of who we believe Jesus to be should inform all that we do. It should not only inform us, but it should transform us. It should give us the courage to step out towards Jesus, to live in the way of Jesus, to step out and walk towards Jesus because courage is about following the Jesus way and following it even in the moments that are difficult, even in the moments that are challenging because we believe that Jesus is the one who helps us to live in his way, even when it's hard. You know, courage isn't the lack of fear, but it's moving forward in despite of it. it. It takes courage to show love when it's hard to love. It, it takes courage to show grace to those who we feel don't deserve it. It, it takes courage to live in unity when it's easier to be divided. It takes courage for us to return kindness to those who are unkind to us. It takes courage for us to show mercy even when we, when we feel it's unfair. And the thing is that we fail at this constantly. As much as we try and try and try to live into the ways of Jesus, even in the ways in which we try to be, to be courageous, there are many times where we fall short. And just like Peter we see the circumstances around us. We see the, th that it is hard to be able to live out this courage in the midst of what is happening. And yet I believe that Jesus is there to reach out to us, to lift us up, to bring us back up onto our feet, to remind us, it is I. Take courage. Take heart. I am here. A couple of weeks ago, my spiritual formation class did an exercise answering the question, who is Jesus? Um, I, my, my doctoral program has actually been such a gift for my life. Um, in, in the ways in which uh, we answer what we feel are such simple questions and have so much depth to them. And, and the, the discussion board assignment was basically, who is Jesus to you? And it was so rich for me to see the responses and also to be able to, to ponder on that question myself. Uh, the, the, the prompt said, offer a phrase or a name or an image of who you believe Jesus is, the way in which you describe Jesus. And so as I started seeing posts, I started seeing Emmanuel, God with us. I saw Jesus, the faithful one. Jesus, my redeemer. Jesus, my restorer. Jesus, my healer. Jesus, my savior. Actually, uh, as I was thinking about it, I was reminded of a song that I used to sing when I was, uh, when I was uh, attending my dad's church um, when I was a little boy. We used to sing a hymn that said, Jesus es mi rey soberano. Jesus is my sovereign king. That Jesus is the one who is the Lord over my life. That's the way I started thinking about who Jesus was in that moment. But there was someone else in my cohort who offered a picture to us. And didn't write too much, just offered the picture. And this was one that stood out to me that reminded me of this particular passage. The, the subject title of this picture and post was, My Ever Help, My Ever Present Help in Time of Need. It's this picture of, of Jesus reaching down into the water in this imagery of what is happening in this passage with Jesus and Peter. That as Peter is sinking, I imagine that this is what he's seeing. As he's wrestling with this question of who Jesus is, I wonder if this image is actually marked in his mind and has marked his heart as well. That as we continue to ask the question, who Jesus is, I, I want us to think about this as well. That Jesus is our ever-present help in time of need. I have to tell you that this picture moved me. 
it caught my attention. Because the one that, who the gospel of, of Mark proclaims as the son of God, the Messiah, is also the one who reaches out to us, who shows us love, who shows us grace, who shows us mercy, who, re, who rescues us. And even in our moments of fear, Jesus is saying, it is I. Take heart. Take courage. And so this morning, this is our reminder of who Jesus is. That even when we have these questions and doubts, who is Jesus to me? That we can be reminded and hopefully remind each other and speak the truth to one another. Actually, when I was in this discussion time, I was grateful that I was reminded about all of the other things, that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. I needed that. That Jesus is my healer. The ways in which we have heard our, our mental health focus uh, stories this, this, this week and Monday and Wednesday shows the ways in which God has been present and God continues to heal and restore and move. That was a good reminder for me. That Jesus is the one who continues to be my ever-present help in time of need. That Jesus continues to, to ask for all of my life because God, Jesus, is my sovereign king. I needed that. And so this morning, this is the reminder. When you are asking the question, who Jesus is, I hope we can, we're able to respond with Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the Messiah. And also Jesus is the one who helps us in every circumstance. And I hope that this moves us into places of courage. To move us into ways in which we can be courageous in difficult times. To be the one who Jesus calls us to be. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. In this moment, I just want you to reflect on that question. Who is Jesus? Take time to answer that question. Take time to see the ways in which Jesus has worked in your life throughout this week, throughout this semester, throughout this year. Think about the ways in which Jesus has been present. Particularly in the moments where you didn't feel Jesus, even in those moments, and yet you can look back and say, yes, Jesus was there saying, it is I. Take heart, take courage. Oh God, we thank you for who you are. We got, we're thankful, Lord, for your presence. We're thankful, Lord, that you are the one who continues to be with us, to move us into places of courage, to move us into places in which we can offer what we, can, we can't humanly offer. And so I pray, Lord, that you be with us. Help us to move by your spirit, to be empowered by your spirit, to be the people that you call us to be. Help us to understand and recognize the ways in which you are at work in our lives that you are the Jesus who has his hand reached out and is there for us. And so we pray, Lord, that as we go into this weekend, that we could be reminded of who you are and be thankful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Have a great weekend. Go in peace.